So hi everyone, welcome to our uh, new Arecibo uh, lunch session. I'm happy to see that many of you here and hope that uh, many more will join us. So today we have um, a talk which will be given by Professor Mano Haran, who's a senior observatory scientist at Arecibo. And the title is Solar, Wind and Space Weather Studies at Arecibo Observatory. So uh, Professor Mano Haran, please take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you very much. Can I share my screen? Yeah, you should be able to. Yes, you should be able to share your screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. A good afternoon. Actually. Okay, it's uh, lunch time. Okay. I, I would like to uh, discuss with you about uh, solar wind and the space weather studies at the uh, Recibo Observatory. Um, uh, the, the observations have been uh, made with, uh, in, uh, with the help of uh, Phil uh, uh, and uh, some of the observation uh, suggestions have been given by uh, Chris. Okay, I'd like to uh, include them in, in my uh, presentation, actually. Okay. <clears throat> so the outline of my talk is uh, multi-frequency interplanetary scintillation observations made with the Arecibo Legacy Telescope. We made this observation during the pandemic period, the telescope time was available. Uh, during the pandemic period and up to about uh, the collapse of the telescope, we could uh, make observations. And um, we could, we could uh, study the uh, uh, solar wind speed, density turbulence, particularly the density turbulence spectrum and uh, uh, turbulence uh, uh, dependence on frequency and the radial distance from the sun. And we could uh, compare some of the results with uh, UT327 Mayer's result. And uh, luckily, we could uh, we could detect um, coronal mass ejection, yeah, or weak coronal mass ejection. I think in our data, two more mass ejections are there. And uh, high latitude coronal jet, actually. And uh, at the end, I will give an overview of recently installed um, uh, Callisto solar radio uh, spectrometer at uh, Recibo. And um, okay, to date, uh, solar wind measurements are uh, mainly made by in-situ sampling of downstream uh, solar wind. The in, in, uh, in, in situ sampling can give density, temperature, speed, composition, and the magnetic field of the solar wind, but uh, they are uh, they are confined to near Earth uh, uh, space, actually uh, near the orbit of the Earth. Actually, the Helios was the uh, only mission went up to about uh, 0.3 AU, and uh, Ulysses was the first uh, spacecraft uh, probed the polar region of the uh, solar wind at uh, a larger distance, more than something like uh, 2 AU away from the uh, sun. But Parker uh, solar probe will probe up to about uh, uh, 10 solar radii uh, from the sun. Whereas the scattering technique, example, the interplanetary scintillation can provide a three-dimensional view of the uh, heliosphere uh, and also region inaccessible to spacecraft. That's, a, that's the important thing, polar regions as well as uh, uh, at uh, various uh, solar objects at all latitude and solar objects. And also it can give large scale and long-term structural evolution of the uh, solar wind. For example, interplanetary scintillation, okay, um, it's a radio source twinkling caused by the uh, turbulent solar wind. And, um, and it exploits the scattering of radiation from point-like radio sources, example, quasars, radio galaxy of angular size less than about of uh, something like uh, 400.4 arc second, uh, milli arc second, and then um, by small scale density irregularities in the solar wind, for example, less than about uh, 500 kilometer uh, size density irregularities. And the, the, the irregularities, they, uh, 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 they uh, drift along with the solar wind and then they cause the uh, scintillation. 
so the uh, scintillation time scales are something like point uh, one to something like ten seconds. So for for uh, four hundred kilometer uh, uh, per second, uh, uh, solar wind it gives uh, 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 spectrum from something like point one hertz to ten hertz or twenty hertz actually something like that. So the shape of the uh, IPS spectrum is related to the um, bulk velocity of the density structure and the scales actually, because IPS can probe uh, something like one kilometer scale size to something like uh, 500 kilometer uh, scale size actually. And IPS is sensitive to radial flow of solar wind around the point of uh, closest approach because uh, IPS involves uh, line of sight integration so that line of sight integration uh, effect uh, has to be removed. Actually, we use uh, tomographic reconstruction, but um, even with our raw data, it gives because this this is the typical geometry. I believe the cn square or the uh, delta n square varies as one over r to the power of four, which is a very steep uh, fall. So the solar wind uh, um, estimation is. Um, um, uh, estimation is concentrated in this uh, closest line of sight to the sun. So, because the the I hear the density turbulence will be very very small because uh, far away from the sun, closest to the sun. So, IPS uh, probes the uh, solar wind at uh, regions close to the uh, closest region of the line of sight actually. So, one can observe various uh, sources away from ecliptic or below the ecliptic and various distances from the sun. So, but IPS can be made using a single station as well as multi-station system, actually. For example, multi-station system, uh, at present only one multi-station system is in operation in uh, uh, Japan, Nagoya University, it's operated by Nagoya University. So that has a three station, uh, a three station that does three, three station IPS. For example, in a multi station IPS, the scintillation pattern moving from one antenna to the other antenna, they can be cross correlated, give the time lag. So the time lag and then the radial uh, project gives the uh, radial projection of the uh, uh, solar wind speed actually if uh, we use uh, more than uh, two antennas like uh, three or four uh, triangulations can be made and then one can get the solar wind speed actually but normally maintaining three antenna system is uh, difficult because it involves uh, baselines uh, larger than the frontal scale for example frontal scale root lambda is a is the typ typical frontal scale size so for um, for uh, um, 327 nanohertz, it involves uh, it involves um, uh, some um, 500 kilometer, 300 kilometer to 500 kilometer. Uh, thing. But at the, sm uh, the larger frequency, we can go for a, a smaller distance. But uh, it, it involves maintaining the uh, number of system separated by uh, several. Uh, 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 kilometers actually, and then baselines will be parallel to the projected uh, sun flow, uh, sun uh, solar wind flow direction actually. And also it depends upon the see if the, for example, if uh, two the multi-station the antenna sensitivity is uh, limited, then we get large error actually. The the the, uh, the correlation um, will be difficult to get, and then it involves uh, large error also. Okay. So whereas the single station like uh, Arecibo, okay, legacy system, it covered 300 mats to 10 guides, uh, covering one, uh, one meter to something like three centimeter um, wavelength. It had a uh, uniform sensitivity of 10 Kelvin per Jansky between 300 to uh, 3000 mats. Actually single station measurements like Arecibo, UT radio telescope, MXRT, they can, because if the stethoscope is sensitive, then one can get the temporal spectrum, suitably transforming the simulation. Okay, like a Fourier transform, one can get the temporal spectrum. That's uh, temporal spectrum can be model fitted and solar wind estimation can be made. For example, this uh, uh, method I, I initiated in the early 90s and this is being followed in 
several IPS uh, observatory that can give solar wind velocity as well as the level of density uh, turbulence and the spatial spectrum of uh, uh, density turbulence. And also it can be a very inexpensive VLBA for uh, something like, uh, something like uh, 500 kilometer uh, baseline kind of thing. So, so uh, this has a lot, a lot of advantage, uh, advantage. For example, at Arecibo, even one minute observation can one minute observation if i want to put precisely one minute observation of 10 millijanski scintillating flux it gives 40 db dynamic range okay so the sensitivity is enormously high for example at Woody, um, i used to observe something like uh, 1000 radio sources uh, per day so each uh, source observations are made for something like one to one minute or one and a half minute. That was the typical. So we could cover large number of sources. Okay, we could cover large, large volume of the uh, heliosphere. So that that is the that is the real advantage. Yesterday I received an email from Brit asking for pros and cons uh, between multi-station and uh, uh, single station IPS. But single station has a large advantage, but it's not a direct measurement actually, okay. But if the sensitivity is good, if the power spectrum has a very good signal to rise ratio, one can get a, a reliable solar wind estimation. That has been compared with this three station as well as uh, it, uh, uh, single station measurements have been compared with the spacecraft and things like that. So I don't want to go in detail, okay. So this, uh, this uh, 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 plot shows the a dynamic spectra observed at uh, L band. Okay, uh, this this is uh, uh, 30 seconds of data. The horizontal axis is the uh, time axis. Vertical is the frequency. So we could see how the scintillation pattern evolve uh, 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 as a function of frequency for a given time. Actually, so we see um, uh, a lot of uh, structures actually, a lot of concentrated points as well as a depletion point actually. So, so th th this is this even this uh, in the in this uh, uh, plot even a small uh, time range plot can be very useful uh, to uh, get the information about the uh, solar wind uh, uh, fluctuation or density fluctuation. Okay, this is something like uh, 150 to 180 over the three minutes of data. So we have uh, these two plot, these two dynamic uh, spectra gives 30 seconds, 30 second, 30 second uh, dynamic spectra. This is an example actually, this shows the real efficiency of the high uh, Arecibo, like Arecibo kind of telescope can give actually, okay. So Arecibo gave a very good power spectra, even for one minute, I, as I told, more than 30 dB, 40 dB, we could get, and then we could get a, um, for example, these, these, these uh, some, some of the spectra, they look like uh, textbook uh, examples actually, okay. So um, uh, we are more interested in some of the spectra which are deviating from the, um, uh, from the uh, textbook example. So they have more information about the our fine scale structure of the solar wind. One can transforming and calibrating, and one can get the uh, um, uh, 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 one can get the speed of the solar wind, and then the, the integrating the uh, the scintillation spectrum, one can get the uh, and the integrating and normalizing by the uh, absorbed uh, flux density of the source, one can get the scintillation index. Okay, for example, um, Arecibo was very useful to obtain obtain uh, uh, density turbulence spectrum. This is the spatial wave number, normalized power for ambient solar wind, as well as the, uh, the um, uh, plasma associated with the coronal mass ejection or plasma associated with the co-rotating interaction region kind of thing. So this is an example actually. For example, Arecibo observations are useful to uh, estimate the inner scale uh, size of the uh, turbulence actually. Alpha nuclear turbulence likely accounts for the energy in solar wind turbulence. But since it is important to understand or understand the micro physical processor responsible for dissipation of the solar wind turbulence, but at what scales actually, what scale they dissipate actually. 
So some of the uh, results are very interesting. We, we could uh, get from the IPS. IPS could give dissipation scale as a function of uh, uh, distance from the sun, actually. And also, it could give dissipation scale as function of source region for high speed wind originating above the coronal hole, low speed wind uh, originating uh, near the closed field configuration of the uh, sun. So we could, they, they, they differ, actually. We could get, for example, I show you an uh, example plot. This has been obtained using L band, S band data. So the horizontal axis is the distance from the sun. The vertical axis is the inner scale size. So inner scale varies as, uh, as uh, out of the world of 0.7, actually. Okay, so we see uh, uh, some kind of linear. So uh, um, uh, Arecibo observations are useful to get uh, in the scale size as well as the solar wind velocity in the in the acceleration region also, acceleration of the solar wind region actually. For example, uh, at a given offset, dissipation scale size changes between the high speed state or the wind originating above the coronal, uh, coronal hole that's an open field configuration and wind originating close to the uh, closed field configuration, the low speed wind. So that's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, subject actually. Okay, it can, it will, it will uh, trigger uh, theoreticians also to work on this. Okay. So um, uh, earlier we got uh, some observations, they, these were limited by uh, single observations. Now we could get a large number of uh, observations from Arecibo, okay, that's an example. So this uh, curve shows the, how the scintillation index varies as a function of um, uh, distance from the sun. The, here, uh, the distance goes from something like near the sun to something like 1 AU or 1.2 AU, the, the vertical axis, so the scintillation index. So the 11.8 minus 0, 0 it's a, it's a, a compact uh, quasar having structure less than 15 milli arc second. And then 0138 plus 136, this is a, a cause are uh, slightly broader, something like 100 to 150 milliards again. So the, we, we could see the reduction in scintillation index from uh, point source to compact source. So at about um, uh, 40 solar day, we see a turnover. The uh, index increases and decreases. The turnover point is uh, known as the weak to uh, this thing, strong to weak scattering turnover. So at distances below, uh, 40 or 50 solar already, the solar wind turbulence is uh, uh, strong scattering. And then here, the um, at distances uh, greater than 40 solar already, we see weak scattering scintillation. In the weak scattering scintillation, it's uh, uh, the uh, density turbulence uh, characteristic and then the scintillation characteristic, they are linearly uh, related. One can, one can get information. So in the strong scattering, it involves uh, some complicated uh, theory. Okay, so at uh, Arecibo we could get we, because uh, I think uh, during the pandemic period, in one day we could observe because we uh, we selected sources close by, nearby, near uh, nearby sources, and then without moving uh, the the feed too much, the platform too much, just. Um, uh, for within a uh, small uh, movement, we could observe large number of sources. This is the L-band observation. So it gives a, um, a scintillation index as a function of time. We could go down to something like eight to uh, seven solar day close to the sun. This is all sources put together. So it gives a um, uh, scintillation index uh, going as R to the power of uh, one, which, uh, which um, accounts for, uh, accounts for uh, 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 CN square R to the power of minus 4.2. So, so nearly same trend for all frequency we see actually here. So here the scintillation index as a function of uh, frequency, for example, L band had uh, uh, something like 600 uh, minutes wide band. So as we, as we, uh, this is this each uh, line is a single day observation. It's a single day observation at we see at the high frequency, we see a low scintillation index. At low frequency, we see high scintillation index. The scintillation decreases uh, uh, as the frequency is increased. So as R, the scintillation index decreases also. This corresponds to something like uh, 
uh, 25 solar radii, this corresponds to 140 solar radii away from the sun. So this, this is a, a, a very interesting uh, plot. Some places we see the uh, trend is changing. Actually, that's, that's due to the uh, crossing of uh, uh, coronal mass ejection or crossing of some transient along the line of sight. So th th those uh, data can be inverted or those data can be studied separately to understand the, understand the um, uh, plasma associated with the uh, transients actually. For example, M goes as a new to the power of minus 1.5. So th this is this is for a one particular source, 3C138, actually. But uh, if you put together all three bands, T band, L band, S band, this is for 0742 plus 103. It's a, 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 a peak spectrum. So actually, this this also was uh, uh, calibrated by Chris actually. So this is a very nice source actually because we could for a given day. As we go higher and higher frequency, the scintillation decreases. So M goes as R to the power of minus 1.4 for a, for a point source. Okay. So this is CTA21. It was the, the curve was uh, flatter actually. So the P band, L band, and the S band curve was uh, uh, flatter actually. So here. So the solar intensity turbine so systematic decrease in frequency. So, because here the frontal radius or the frontal scale size is larger, here frontal scale size is smaller. So, it decreases with the size of the frontal scale actually. So, so that's the that's the uh, important characteristics we could. And uh, the P is a function of uh, the source size actually for for uh, compact source or uh, narrower source. So, we get a, a flatter uh, P for a steeper source, steeper source. Maybe the source size is uh, uh, taking over than the uh, uh, frontal scale. So we get a, um, uh, we get a, um, uh, sorry, a steeper uh, uh, slope, okay. So this, this, the, 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 this is an interesting result we, we could uh, obtain from the legacy telescope. And uh, this uh, plot shows the, the slope for all the sources as a function of uh, distance from the sun actually. So see in the, in the, this is L band data in the weak scattering, L band weak scattering starts somewhere here actually, something like uh, 20 solar already. The weak scattering, the slope is almost, it, this, this bottom portion corresponds to, corresponds to the, corresponds to the larger source and then the upper portion corresponds to the uh, um, a narrower source. But we see a, we see a, uh, we see a um, uh, um, um, minimum point or the curve uh, um, it's a minimum at about something like uh, 70 solar radii. I'm not uh, sure what is the reason for it actually. So uh, th this, could, this could be associated with the, associated with the, um, uh, the scales probed and then the dissipation scale also. So, but uh, one has to uh, one has to work more on this actually. Okay. So, uh, Arshibo could give the uh, give the synoptic uh, 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 map at about 50 solar radii because observations are made in the distance range of one, one to uh, one to 80 solar radii, some 10 to 80 solar radii. So it gave a, at about 50 uh, solar radii heliosphere, we could get the uh, density. This, this is south pole of the heliosphere to the north pole heliosphere, 50 solar radii. 50 solar radii means something like uh, 0.25 AU uh, heliosphere, okay. So, so uh, which, which was nicely um, agreeing with the, uh, agreeing the source surface, uh, Manity field from this is a Wilcox uh, uh, magnetic field. This is a current sheet. This is a southern coronal hole, northern coronal hole. So, for example, so this shows the UV uh, image taken by SD, uh, SDO uh, spacecraft. So, this uh, coronal hole, this region was nicely mapped by uh, this, this, this corresponds to high speed wind and uh, low density turbulence, actually. Okay, so that's another one. 
and we could detect uh, uh, coronal mass ejection okay i, I give a brief uh, uh, introduction about coronal mass ejection largest phenomena associated with the dissipation of magnetic flux at and above the surface of the sun okay so the speed can range from something like uh, 100 km per second to um, 3000 or 4000 km per second so the low speed wind normally corresponds to normally corresponds to um, um, Uh, filament eruption uh, the high speed wind uh, high speed cme corresponds to eruption actually from uh, uh, associated with the flare or very large uh, particle acceleration so earth directed cmes are responsible for most of the intense magnetic disturbance of the earth actually so one need to understand the uh, three dimensional evolution of magnetic field cme size and speed and the direction of propagation uh for earth direction cme because we need to make some precautionary measure at the for example the cme can cause uh, as i told can cause uh, intense magnetic field so they can disturb the power line pipeline and the oil pipelines and things like that even railway track so there are that are lot of efforts and also to uh, to um, to safeguard uh, the spacecraft so the um space weather prediction or cme arrival prediction is uh, important actually so ips uh, technique is useful to track cme in the sun earth uh, distance which the ips can provide a synoptic image of the heliosphere one can track the cme routine monitoring of ips on a large number of sources like ut okay ut can measure something like 1000 radio sources we could even a track of fine scale uh, structures in the heliosphere that can uh, and then one can do the predimensional reconstruction of the uh, observations uh, one can get the uh, uh, heliosphere so um, arecibo can also give a similar predimensional reconstruction but at a closer distance to the sun actually ut 327 minutes it can give a um, heliosphere at about 100 solar radii or greater than 100 solar radii 0.5 or uh, um, heliosphere larger than 0.5 but arecibo can give something like 0.25 au also okay so we could detect uh, one cme the cme was associated with a filament eruption it was a slow moving cme it was not a very because we observed all these observation we made all these observation in the solar minimum condition the time the sun spot uh, was running very very low so this shows the sdo image this is the eruption of that uh, um, uh, filament this is this sdo running difference image okay so this eruption but even though it was a uh, uh, low speed cme it was associated with uh, Uh, type 2 radio burst the radio burst was observed at uh, wind wave spacecraft as well as uh, uh, stereo i uh, had uh, spacecraft okay. so this shows the stereo type 2 uh, observation this shows the wind wave stereo is um, um, uh, stereo i had is uh, something like uh, something like uh, uh, 80 degree east of the uh, sun earth line actually so so this this wind wave scraps is uh, sitting at the l1 point along the sun earth line so so this cme was directed towards uh, stereo that's a that's an important point actually so so this is the lasco image actually so this was uh, this cme was a uh, 80 degree wide and uh, along the position angle 80 degree so we could uh, track the cme up to about uh, since this is in the near sun region in the ips region so the speed increases from 200 km to 400 km so ips uh, gave a uh, so this shows the this thing um previous day and uh, the scintillation index when the cme was crossing we could okay in the ips field of view the the cme uh, speed was uh, uh, something like 400 km so the the important point is the the uh, spatial spectra associated with the cme plasma was flatter actually okay it's much flatter than kolmogorov actually normally the so for nominal solar wind the alpha or the spectral index is something like 
3.4 to 3.6 actually. It's very close to the kolmogram, but it, this was, uh, and also the inner scale or dissipation scale is likely less than 50 uh, kilometer at about one solar area, 120 solar area. So that shows that the, 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 the CME uh, plasma uh, is uh, uh, special or it's, it has a, a different characteristic compared to the compared to the ambient solar wind plasma. So we could model, so this shows the typical, this is the, the x-axis is the sun to 2a distance and then y-axis is the relative turbulence. We could get the uh, shape of the CME in, uh, in the three-dimensional uh, view, okay. Okay, we, we could also detect uh, coronal jet actually, highlighted jet, coronal jet. jet. Actually the sensitivity of Arecibo was extremely good actually. So extremely good means it could give a very, very um, large um, uh, signal to noise ratio uh, temporal spectra. And the jets are collimated high speed ejection of plasma. The ejection speed can be something like 500 kilometer to 2000 kilometer per second also. So they are observed in the um, uh, extreme ultraviolet as well as in the X-ray. So the temperature involves something like uh, 2 million, so it can be something like uh, two, 2 to 6 million also. Actually, just are important to understand the energy release processes linked to coronal heating. So, and also there, there is, there is a, a, some theoretical work polar jets can be possibly aided by the high speed solar wind originating above the uh, coronal hole. Actually. So for example, okay, there was a figure, that figure is not appearing. I had, a, I had a cartoon where the uh, jet can, but that uh, figure is not uh, appearing now. So it, 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 it can, uh, the jet can appear uh, close to the um, uh, close to the field and open field region in the, in the coronal hole region. So at that boundary, jets can happen. So it can lead to X-ray breakpoints and then high speed jets also. So this shows the, uh, um, actually one, two, three, three spacecraft uh, data. LASCO sitting at the L1 point, SDO sitting at the L1 point, Stereo is away from the uh, Sun Earth line. So Stereo A and uh, SDO and the LASCO, they all detected the, the thing. This is the location of, um, location of Stereo ahead. So LASCO, wind waste, and uh, they are sitting at the L1 point. So this is the Stereo ahead. So this this uh, these two the first one and third one third figure and fourth figure, uh, images they were observed by uh, stereo so comparing stereo and uh, SDO uh, and uh, LASCO we could get the uh, position of the position of the um, uh, jet at about something like 80 uh, degree south latitude actually so this uh, jet. Uh, coincided with the two sources actually at the Arecibo observation at about, we could see the jet signature up to about 40 solar area. So that's, that's the very interesting point actually. <coughs> Those images show get about uh, something like 0.2 solar area, but <coughs> we could see the jet at um, 40 solar area we could observe in the L band as well as S band. The IPS speed was something like 950 to 1000 kilometer per second. And also the, the jet uh, turbulence spectra showed a large anisotropy. Anisotropy means the, 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 the uh, density in homogeneity. They were elongated along the field line or along the jet. <coughs> and also we, we measured a scintillation increase of 1.5 times. Uh, Oh, okay. yeah, there is a one more figure. Actually, that figure is also not appearing. I'm sorry. That gave the four uh, uh, temporal uh, spectra. Okay, I, after the talk, I can come back for that. The another, another interesting uh, thing is, as I told, the width of the temporal spectra is related to the bulk velocity. 
so for arecibo we could uh, arecibo spectra we could determine the second moment likely this uh, this, this is the second moment of the power spectrum or this is the equivalent width of this power spectrum actually so the equivalent sorry there is some problem i don't know <clears throat> here uh, this was how the equivalent width increases for the uh, speed for three different uh, band please i got it here so for example this is the low speed this is the l band observation s band observation these observations they are so sensitive they give different axial ratio actually at l band when when we when we uh, when we uh, use uh, fresnel scale of the order of uh, l band so so the axial ratio seems to be small actually when we go for higher frequency for example for example when we probe smaller density irregularity the axial ratio or the the axial ratio is the major to minor axis of the uh, uh, ratio of major to minor uh, axis of the density irregularity but at the small scale axial ratio seems to be larger actually okay i think again it's 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 it it it, it, it can feed a lot of uh, a lot of thinking for the uh, tradition actually so this is the l band observation but the s band observation so this 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 uh, uh, actually new result uh, we got and also it gives a hold to determine the uh, velocity of the uh, solar wind also actually okay so i i i i would like to i i would like to uh, say that it is essential to have an arecibo like uh, sensitive telescope to make detailed study of the space weather events or uh, solar wind uh, uh, micro physical processes and things like that okay and then i will give a overview of the callisto i'm sorry i'm taking time okay so recently we installed a callisto uh, solar radio spectrometer at arecibo it is located at 12 meter antenna hill top on the rooftop of the uh, control room we started the observation on 10th october and then um, it can observe uh, sun from east to west horizon and uh, observing time is something like morning 6:30 am to uh, 7:30 sorry 5:30 pm it covers uh, atlantic uh, longitude we record at present we record uh, in the frequency range of uh, 10 to um, 120 mhz and then we have a sampling rate of something like uh, 100 millisecond to 200 millisecond and then every day data the important point is every day data is so cleanly made available on the uh, website at this link at the top so one can see callisto information in this uh, paper actually this was uh, led by arnold benz and i am also uh, uh, part of this uh, work so this shows the callisto uh, uh, spectrum type 2 radio burst spectrum observed the uti callisto so callisto is a, a network of uh, several uh, radio spectrometers actually okay so this was the first light on we started the observation on 10th uh, october on that day itself we got a we got a nice uh, weak burst actually okay so this burst was also observed uh, by san vito italy and segamo uh, uh, hill uh, at uh, 25 to 67 and then stereo a and wind waves also recorded this burst at uh, a low frequency okay so that's the uh, first slide so this that this shows the typical view actually one can uh, of the antenna and then this is a long wave length antenna one can get the uh, information about this antenna in this uh, reference actually so so they we cover a frequency range of uh, 5 to 100 mhz the the gain of the antenna changes with the zenith angle okay okay also with the temperature respectively reduction of 3 db at uh, 45 degree zenith angle and uh, reduction of 6 db at uh, greater than 70 degree so this antenna um, uh, because since it's a stationary antenna it can have <coughs> uh, gradual uh, variation in gain actually so this shows the one day plot this is a 12 hour plot at uh, two different frequency but some uh, so when the rfi is uh, dominating 
the, the, the plots will be jumping up and down. I did not include, so this is another day uh, plot. Okay, this is the typical coverage of uh, sun for uh, Arecibo, uh, Arecibo um, Callisto, this uh, the horizontal axis UT time, and then this is the month of the year actually. So we have a good coverage in something like uh, May. <clears throat> So to give a, a small introduction, sun is one of the strongest radio sources in the sky. Energy of moving electronics converted into radiation. The radio emission uh, involves uh, thermal Bramstrong 3-3 emission, zero magnetic uh, emission, plasma emission, electron cyclotransmission emission. I will skip uh, all those introductions. I will go to some results actually. Okay. So for example, uh, low frequency observation to um, High, high frequency radio observation and, uh, and UV and X-ray observation can probe sun from the near sun region to near Earth orbit actually. So this, this uh, frequency involves uh, something close to the orbit and things like that, okay. <clears throat> so there was a, there was a filament eruption on, uh, on 27th October. So this was nicely recorded by Aristibo uh, Callisto actually, this was a, uh, type 4 even moving filament, moving expanding filament. This was also recorded, uh, sorry, some, some plots are missing. Actually, I, I, I included the uh, stereo uh, uh, plot from 14 mahertz to 1 mahertz, so that plot is not appearing. Okay, another mass ejection was there. It was associated with the X uh, intense flare. This flare, uh, intense flare occurred after four years, 19, sorry, uh, 2017. Uh, September 7th, we had an X-ray flare. After that, sun was quiet. We did not uh, have any intense flare. So around October 28th, we had an X-ray flare. This flare was well observed by Arecibo uh, Callisto. We got a very nice uh, uh, type two, a fundamental and a harmonic, and um, this this gave a speed of something like uh, the type two speed is uh, 1,460 kilometer. That CME is moving fast actually. So further analysis we are doing. So this was the CME uh, recorded by stereo ahead spacecraft actually. So the ahead is sitting somewhere here. So far ahead, this was a this was a um, best moving a CME for. The Sun Earth line, this was a Earth directed CME, and this CME caused an intense geomagnetic storm at the uh, near Earth environment. So the DST was uh, more than a minus, uh, <clears throat> it was uh, more intense than minus 100 uh, nanotesla. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here. Okay, and also we, we have plans to track Sun at X band, watch for uh, high temporal as well as high frequency resolution observations from. Uh, 12 meter and also. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's stop here. I'm sorry for taking more time. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much uh, for this very interesting uh, talk. I can certainly say I learned a lot. So we would like to invite questions right now. So are there any questions from the audience? And you can actually just put your question into the chat or I will, or you can just speak up. <clears throat> okay, while people are formulating their questions, um, I would like to know if um, how you are progressing um, or if you are progressing um, with further UT observations. I saw at the very beginning or in the first part of your talk, uh, observations taken with the UT radio telescope. Yeah. Actually, UT radio telescope is going through at present uh, upgrade actually. So uh, mm. the observations are not uh, followed, but uh, UT observation will start uh, soon. And also UT observations are fully automated because since we observe more okay. than 1,000 1, source, it's fully automated. Just we have to park the telescope at uh, three different position to cover uh, uh, three part of the heliosphere. So. So this other, I wanted to show one example, but um, uh, uh, since um, I may run out of time, so that's why I did not include uh, one tomographic reconstruction of OT actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, also, inter- UD, UD is uh, also a sensitive telescope, but it's a single frequency. It's a monochromatic uh, telescope, yeah. 327 mass. It is 530 meter long and 30 meter wide cylindrical paraboloid. And uh, uh, so, so the, the UT and uh, the single station method uh, go together because, because of the high sensitivity, we could, uh, we could establish the single station velocity method and also, and uh, the Japanese measurements are also at 327 meters, and we could get simultaneous observation between UT and uh, Japan because the yeah. time difference is uh, nearly four and a half hours. So when the source is uh, rising at UD, it will be transiting at uh, Japan. So we could uh, we could get simultaneous observation. Those things were were really very fortunate to establish the method. Actually, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Chris is asking, what is the smallest diameter for an AO 2.0 telescope that you would consider crucial to continue your IPS studies at Arecibo? <laughs> Actually, whether I, uh, they say I, I can continue the IPS with it. See, for example, um, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to detect a large number of sources, we need a, a large telescope, actually, and also a, a large telescope as well as the high sensitive uh, telescope. For example, it's for even with see, 12 meter, we can observe about a, about a 10 to dozen sources, actually. Okay, 12 meter uh, at Arecibo over uh, throughout the year, actually, which is uh, which is compared to throughout the year at UD, we observe 7,000 sources, 7,000 sources versus so. So the, now you can uh, try to scale it actually. Okay, okay, 12 meter to 50 meter. Okay, that, that, that's um, okay, reasonable actually. If it is a 50 meter to 75 meter and 100 meter, 100 meter will be really very, very good actually. Okay, even 50 meter, one can do routine observations of uh, a large number of sources also if the telescope is sensitive. And one more big advantage we had with the Arecibo was it could probe large range of uh, frontal scales actually. So that, that was the exciting thing for me actually. And also now we see with the one frequency frontal scale to the other frequency frontal scale, we see started seeing the physical property uh, of this solar wind or turbulence varying and then the like axial ratio dissipation scale and things like that. So that gives uh, uh, another another important excitement for the future studies actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Super interesting, thank you. We have one more question from Selvarai. Um, calculated inner scale, is it same for all the observing frequencies at given uh, distance from the sun? Inner scale is the, is the, the, the uh, scale size associated with the uh, turbulence dissipation, actually. That's the minimum scale or cutoff scale, actually, because inner scale, fluid dynamics uh, call it as inner scale, and some people call it as a cutoff scale and then the dissipation scale. So that purely depends on the, because inner scale, uh, we 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 uh, uh, theoretically we say the inner scale is the is the um, uh, alpha wave divided by the uh, cyclotron frequency alpha wave which is a magnetic field and the density uh, uh, dependent and then so so the the the, the, the this boils down to uh, the uh, density as well as the magnetic field actually yeah. Okay, thank you. We have one more question from the same uh, person. How do you separate the L band of GPS signal from sun emitted L band signal? Since L band of GPS are also distorted and comes along with L band of sun. No, we don't, uh, we don't uh, record the sun L band signal. We record scintillation at the L band, we track a source. Sometimes the interference source can be there actually. For, for example, a receiver um, observation, 
So we we faced a, inter, a severe interference also from from uh, I think Phil used to uh, Phil used to um, uh, tune and then he used to uh, show me the uh, L band uh, uh, interfering thing. So we are not first of all we are not tracking sun. We are not uh, trying to absorb sun. We are tracking sources away from sun. We can't go very close to sun also. Sometimes sun silo can be um, so, so intense and then that can also spoil the interference. We don't track sun. We keep away from the sun. We, but we sometimes we, we face uh, interference at L band. So if the data is not uniformly good, we throw the data. Mm. We, we try to we struggle and even we try to take one minute of data, okay, sometime. Even one, less than one minute data is uh, good means we throw the entire data, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, can you tell us in 30 seconds why we need to rebuild um, the Arecibo radio telescope? Oh, there are n number of questions. As a space weather point of view, the Arecibo should be rebuilt. It's an, it was an excellent uh, telescope because I have used it. I have used several uh, radio telescopes to study uh, centralization. Kashima, VLBI, DISH, I have used it. For, uh, for me, that gave the first estimation of the inner scale. And UTI, I have used it extensively. And also UTI gave a lot of information about the flux rope structures and of the, uh, the CME and things like that. And I have used um, uh, Japanese uh, array and also I have, uh, uh, we had we in, even now we have collaboration it's a, it's a, it's a 30 years uh, of uh, collaboration still going actually so above, and also I have used the Mexican uh, radio telescope which is exclusive built for Arecibo uh, sorry IPS so of, of all this, I, and I, I have used ISCAT Observation also, I scared the dish for making centralization and some some of the uh, some of the uh, low low for observation also I have analyzed and I, be, I was involved in the MWA IPS observation also above all Arecibo was the best and it gave excellent uh, thing actually in. Um, we are pricing that because because of the collapse we got into a big shark and we could not work and things like that and mm -hmm. uh, but um, when when i started analyzing the data then the, and the day uh, this thing uh, results i showed and then the preliminary results i showed i shared with you they are of excellent quality they have a lot of information it can give food for a lot of theoretical people also actually yeah we should build a recibo Thank you. I agree completely with you. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the audience? We are almost at the hour. You can also unmute and, and just speak up. Okay, so if not, Thank you very much, Professor Manoharan. This was a very, very interesting talk and a very great overview uh, over so many decades of your studies. Um, we, I think, all completely agree with you that we need to re rebuild the Arecibo uh, radio telescope, so Arecibo 2.0. And yeah, let's, let's stay in touch, obviously. And um, for all of you who are actually not AACP members, so please consider joining us. We are growing a lot by every day. And uh, we are actually one of the many forces um, behind uh, the aim to rebuild um, the, uh, the telescope that collapsed almost a year ago. OK, with, uh, with that, thank you very much. And thank we will see much. you in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much.